So what is blockchain? Textbook dictionary, blockchain is a distributed database that is shared amongst the nodes of a computer network as a database. A blockchain stores information electronically in digital format. Blockchains are best known for the crucial role in cryptocurrency systems, such as Bitcoin, for maintaining a secure and decentralized record of transactions. The innovation of a blockchain is that it guarantees the fidelity and security of a record of data and generates trust without the need for a trusted third party. The key takeaway from that, all that fancy talk, is to simply say it's a very transparent ledger that cannot be manipulated. Why is that important? Imagine a space where, to give an example, like in a stock market, sometimes people are doing other things, they're spending money, they're, um, you know, a CFO of a company might buy back shares, and sometimes it might be a whole quarter before you know this. It might be a full year before certain things come to light. But with the blockchain, once you know the wallet address of that particular company, then you're going to be able to go on a blockchain real time as something happens or something changes and see what changes were made, who purchased what, who sold what, who's the main holder of everything. And when you think about that as an investor, I think that is one of my favorite things about the blockchain space and what makes me dive in so aggressively is the fact that there's a level of transparency that not a lot of financial institutions will give you. To give you an example, when we talk about gold, we used to have a time frame in which the US dollar and different things were backed by silver and gold. And we don't really know ledger-wise what is happening with how much gold America actually has. That has been a lot of jokes in the finance world that if you went to Fort Knox to where they held all this gold, et cetera, that it would basically be barren. And that, off, you know, when you look at, you know, countries like China, you know, we owed a lot of these countries a lot of gold and we don't have as much as we used to. And we're not in a good space when it comes to that. Is that true or not? I don't know. But guess what? With the blockchain, if we did have all of our gold on this ledger and it was something that um, was physically visible for the whole world to see, then if something has changed, you would be able to know. And the thing about the blockchain, when you think about it, for those who wonder what makes it so secure, what makes it so transparent, the system is not just backed by one blockchain. There's like this mother, like it's all AI controlled, but beyond the AI control of it, it has fail systems in which if somebody was to try to break into one and manipulate it, that there is a backup to a backup to a backup. And it's like quadruple secure. There would be alerts. It would be very visible there, you know, it's almost, I'm not going to say impossible because nothing in my opinion is technically impossible, but at that same point for most things, but when it comes to the blockchains, especially if it's specifically the main blockchain that all the subdivision blockchains go to, it's, it makes it really, really hard to hack it. And it's not saying that once again, if you're in the crypto space, you can't be hacked. It's not saying that tokens can't be hacked. And it's not saying some of these subdivision blockchains that report to the bigger blockchain can't have issues or be reported incorrectly or have um, certain you know transparencies that are missing. But what then happens is in a situation like Shiba, for instance, there was a whole situation where a company was reporting the wrong amount of tokens for Shiba. Even Shiba thought they had a certain amount of tokens purchased and they were reporting this number and, uh, as to what they thought their circulation supply was. And then they were able to go to the original blockchain and through a lot of research and a lot of data and looking at every last sale that has ever and every purchase and every token that was created, they were able to use the original blockchain to look at it. And the original blockchain is something that is kind of having like the, the Fort Knox of blockchains. And then you can, through very hard means, have your information sent to that. And what I mean by hard means is like you can update your information, you can send information to it to create your database, but to manipulate and whatever transaction you've recorded or created on that market space, definitely not the easiest to hack. If it was that easy, trust me, a lot of people probably would have done it already the same way they hack other people's tokens. But anyway, moving on. Um, and you know, there's always going to be the people who are like, oh, anything that is created can be manipulated or abused of. You know, and maybe in the future, somebody will figure out how to do so. Um, or maybe AI will figure out how to hack itself. Who knows? But what I can tell you for right now is definitely with more secure and more transparent than, um, you know, 
other databases and other ways that people do things. So some of the most discussed blockchain and their explorers. Now these are subdivisions under the block, the main blockchain um, are Ethereum. Ethereum's blockchain is called etherscan.io, Binance, the scan.com, Polygon, polygonscan.com, um, Avalanche, which is snowtrace.io, Solana, which is soulscan.io, Bitcoin, blockchain.info. And so what are those websites? They're, those explorers allow you to put in anyone's wallet address and see every transaction that was ever done with that particular wallet address. So if anything was under the Ethereum token, you'd be able to put in that person's wallet address. And if they purchase any token or any NFT or anything that is Ethereum based, the history and all the transactions would be physically there and evident. The same for uh, Polygon. But like, let's say you're trying to see an Ethereum exchange or a purchase on the Ethereum network. You can't go to the Ethereum network and see what somebody, the Solana, a person particularly purchased unless they purchase it through the Ethereum network. So if they purchase art, like in Magic Eden, which is a, is a Solana platform that utilize, utilizes that, then you would need to go to solscan.io to look into those transactions. This might sound like Chinese a little bit right now, um, but keep in mind, we're just mainly talking about metaverse NFTs and crypto basics. But once again, later on, if you guys want to like a deep dive into this, that's a whole other conversation and we can always have it. So some of the websites that you can use to verify like blockchains. And once again, these websites are regular websites, people, normal people and AI are updating them. So sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're not as accurate, but some good ones on the list are CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko, CoinDesk, Cointelegraph. You notice the name Coin and all of those. There are other platforms and websites but you know, for today's purposes, these are some of the main ones that I would say, like especially like Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, a lot of people in this space utilize. Why is that important, right? Let's say that you have a crypto token like Ethereum, and you're going to purchase Ethereum, and you know Ethereum tells you, hey, we we created one million Ethereum tokens, and then they say we sold seven hundred thousand. 700,000 tokens already. Now keep in mind, crypto tokens are like a barter system, which we're gonna dive into that shortly. Imagine that you're now gonna have to be in a position where you then as an individual have to potentially be believing that 700,000 people or 700,000 tokens are sold. With the blockchain, you would be able to verify if it was the same wallet address who purchased all 700,000. Was it 300,000 people who purchased 700,000 of the tokens? And then that also gives you more power when it comes to circulating supply, how many people are interested in a particular item and makes you decide, is it an NFT or a token or whatever project that you would want to invest in? Because now you're able to know more data on that particular brand or company or the way they're moving or how many bad reports they have. The list continues using the blockchain for verification. And some of these websites will also help you make sure that if there's a scammer with a fake website claiming to be Ethereum, and they're like, oh, this is Ethereum's new website, Ethereum 3. And then, you know, just make sure you don't connect your wallet address to a scammer's website. And you're actually going to like CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko to look up what is the actual website for Ethereum. Do they have a new website? And just to show you what an explorer looks like, this is what it would like look like. So this to give you an example is Etherscan. Most of them kind of have this same basic interpretation. You would put your wallet address right here. And that basically is a key that unlocks a lot of like hold your money in the crypto space. Um, so if it's an Ethereum based wallet, you would put the address there. Um, or if you did a transaction and you're like, hey, let me see how long is it going to, you know, how long ago did I purchase X, Y, and Z? If you have that, that token hash or any of this information, you would be able to then look it up. 